Ahoy, do you taste the scandals? Listen, we make a lot of weird stuff on this show, right? And I know what you're saying. I see all the chatter online. I see you all tweeting out there. You think some of the food doesn't taste good. You see, you see our coworkers, they're eating the food, they're saying it tastes good, but you go, no, no, they are weak need lackeys, they are paid to be here, and they are lying. Well, 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 that's why, to really test my mettle, we've invited some of the greatest minds in the entire culinary world to put me to the test and judge my food. Everybody, please welcome chef, cookbook author, and esteemed food critic, Noah Gluten. <laughs> I didn't know what we were doing. In the world sounds strong. I don't know. We, we really set 30, you up. Within 30 minutes of the studio. <laughs> Listen, LA is a big place, all right? It's hard to drive around here. But no, I mean, you actually have. You've written cookbooks with some of the best chefs in the entire world. You've yeah. opened restaurants yourself. You've been a food critic. You have a really incredible YouTube channel right now competing with us. Go watch it, though. It's pretty good. we got a link in the description. Similar number of views. No, but you've been all around. You've been to the top of the mountain. You've like had some of the best food in the world. Yeah, I'm uh, very, very lucky. I've gotten to travel a lot, getting to write about food a lot, uh, and I get to develop recipes, go travel for work. So I've, I've eaten at some of the best restaurants in the world, and we'll find out if this counts as that. I mean, you're familiar with the show. You've seen the things that we do. You yeah. know that there is a secret ingredient under there that has been plucked from a 7-Eleven shelf. Uh -huh. Do you think that the things you're gonna eat today could ever compare to some of the better foods in your life? No, but... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> well, so here's the question. Is it like is it like chopped style, where it's like a part of the judgment is how you're incorporating the ingredient into it? Or is it like, pretend you're just at a nice restaurant and you paid $500 for a tasting menu and how do you feel? Because those are different, different Different rubrics to gauge uh, the quality of a dish. Maybe like if you uh, ordered Cheesecake Factory to go and you spent like $30 on it, then it's how mad would you be? That's where we're going for. But well, no, 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 you should be judging. Curious regardless of the food. <laughs> I'm eating 1300 calories worth of chicken, Cajun Alfredo, I'm in baby. Uh, but no, I mean, judge how we use the secret ingredient here, but also just how it tastes. Cause okay. overall we are trying to make the food taste as good as possible. Yeah. You ready to see what's under the towel? I, I am. No, it's an A. Should I try to guess based on the shape? Yeah, do it. I mean, it looks like a 7-Eleven hot dog. <laughs> oh, you wish. Hit Skittles. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. You All a right. fan? I was when I we used to still buy candy. It's been a long time. Fair enough, fair but uh, yeah, little kid Noah liked Skittles a lot. There's a textural, really satisfying textural element to Skittles. And I feel like when you cook it, that goes away. So you're taking away the best part of Skittles, unless you're just sprinkling it on top of something, which is also an option. We're gonna try We're gonna try and preserve some of the texture here, but do you think... <laughs> Preserving the texture. All right, we have a three course meal coming up for you. You ready to judge this thing? I'm ready. Let's get to it. That texture is a really, truly great thing. It's like there's a hard candy shell around taffy, but then it... Skittles are good, what can I say? My name is Noah Galutin. I'm a chef, cookbook author, and host of a new YouTube cooking show called Don't Panic Pantry. I've worked with some of the best chefs in the world. I've worked with uh, Jeremy Fox, who's a legendary acclaimed chef here in Los Angeles. Uh, Kevin Bloodsoe was my mentor, my big brother, one of these legends of barbecue in America. And I'm writing books right now with Naisha Arrington and Ari Kolender, who are also incredible chefs, and my own cookbook, which is coming out in January. Looking down at everything in front of me, I'm suddenly filled with, uh, I don't wanna say regret, but Skittles are, I think, the toughest challenge that we face. Cause like Mountain Dew Baja Blast, right? Like that's something any Michelin star chef would cook with. Um, Slim Jims, same thing. Skittles are tough because they have so much of that artificial fruit flavor. So what I was thinking, you gotta find a cuisine that uses a lot of sugar in their food and a lot of acid. And so for me, I'm thinking like kind of Chinese American food, but I grew up with hot and sour soup. What better way to add one thickness which you know I'm, I'm down with, the thickness, right? Ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, and so we're going hot and sour soup right now. We're gonna try and plate it nice and elegantly. Uh, we got a lot of Aramax, we're gonna build a lot of flavor. So we got a pot of water right there. We're adding light soy to it. First, I'm gonna chop my mushrooms. <laughs> I always forget what I'm gonna do. You have the game plan in your mind and then you just completely forget. But like Russ Wilson, you gotta let me cook. That's a joke, the Broncos are, I don't know when this video is coming out, but I know the Broncos are still gonna be bad. All right, so we're just gonna slice. These are king trumpet mushrooms, AKA king oyster mushrooms, is the same thing. And for my money, sexiest mushroom? So we're gonna kind of use this to build the base of the stock along with all of these other Air Max we got going. There we go. A little bit of sesame oil, sesame oil, incredibly fragrant. Again, we're just building layers of flavor right here. 
White pepper, white pepper is one of the things that gives hot and sour soup its hotness. We got dark soy in there. We're adding some light soy. Oh, also mushroom bouillon. A lot of hot and sour soup in China is made with like pork stock. Uh, it generally comes from the uh, either Beijing or Sichuan, but a lot of them in America are made with a vegetable based stock. So we're gonna add some mushroom uh, bouillon in there. And then chinkyang vinegar, black vinegar. This is made from glutinous rice or glutinous sorghum aged for a long time. It's Similar to balsamic in the sense that it's like a very age reduced vinegar. It's got a ton of acid, but it's also got a ton of umami and just like crazy complexity. Dude, get a bottle of black vinegar. You can order it on Amazon for like six bucks. Or like Jeff Bezos will deliver it to your house personally. Now is the question of how much Skittles to add. There's no game plan for this. There's no, there's no playbook, but I think, I don't know how much. Think about this as a chef, all right? Noah is a very accomplished cook in his own right. He's worked with some of the best chefs in the world. This is just a combination of gelatin, sugar, citric acid. We know it's gonna thicken it. But whatever, man, I don't even eat Skittles anymore because I'm afraid of them ripping out my fillings, so I just suck on them. Like a horse salt lick. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dried lily buds. So this is a typical ingredient in hot and sour soup. I'm just gonna slice these up. Okay, kind of in half, kind of give it a little like razor thin chop right here. And I'm just gonna keep slicing up. Come back in a sec. Now, uh, wood ear fungus. This is one of my favorite things in the entire world. It has this like, I use the term cartilaginous snap for it because it's kind of got that texture of like a pig ear or a sea cucumber. They all have this like really snappy texture. It's really beautiful. So I'm gonna snap, snap them, snack them up, stack them up. I'm gonna kind of give it like a chiffonade. because I love having those like really thin ribbons of wood ear. All right, wood ear fungus. That's going to the pot again, building layers of flavor. We got the mushroom bouillon, the king trumpets, we got the wood ear. I'm gonna save those for later. Uh, now, going back to the aromatics, orange peel again, like Noah has worked with. Jeremy Fox, Rustic Canyon Group, right? Are you impressed? I'm impressed. Really though, I mean, he's, he's uh, written cookbooks with Michelin star chefs. I was doing his own cooking thing. Food critic for LA Weekly. All right, slicing up, orange rind. Ah, fragrant. And this will also add a little bit of bitterness because you're getting that pith in there. And that bitterness is going to counter all the sweetness of them Skittles. Josh, if you could eat any Skittle flavor, what Skittle flavor would you eat? red. Bamboo shoots, they taste nice. I enjoy them. They got a nice little texture to them. Mm. Crunchy, I'm gonna break them down. Tofu, I'm gonna slice. There we go. All right, tofu in there. Skittles completely dissolves. All as taste as you go, sometimes just throw more Skittles in. That's the good thing about soups, is you can just like keep developing flavor, keep adding things as you go. Boy, do you taste the Skittles. All that flavor, all that acid. I'm gonna add some more of this Ching Kong vinegar right here. Um, holy smokes, this is, <laughs> there's a weird amount of umami set against a weird amount of artificial orange flavor that kind of tastes like shampoo. The cheap shampoo, you know what I'm talking about? The VO5 that costs a dollar at CVS? Well, it's like a dollar 89 now, you have inflation. Uh, and a I think it's just like poison for your hair. All right, now I'm gonna thicken this up. Jeez. Add some cornstarch, thicken this. I want this to be nice and sturdy, lovely. You can feel that thickening up, tightening against the spoon. What else does this need? What else, what else do I add? We got sriracha here in case we need it. I'm gonna add a little dash. Just for some heat, not a traditional Chinese ingredient. Uh, it's a traditional Irwindale, California ingredient. That's right, home to the Irwindale Speedway and the Sriracha Factory. But then the Sriracha Factory started poisoning the town. Y'all know about this, right? Yeah, there's like a toxic cloud of like hot red jalapeno fumes because they grew too big and yeah, it's actually kind of sad. Uh, but no, Sriracha, proud, proud American product. All right, love that. Soup's gonna thicken up. Now what we're gonna do, crack some eggs and whisk those in. All right, similar like egg drop soup where you get that lovely, those ribbons of cooked egg in there. I'm just gonna take this, we're gonna whisk that in. That's gonna help thicken it up. Also give it some nice body. And then it gives you like a little bit more substance to sort of carry all those flavors. All right, it's been bubbling away. Added some more Skittles, get some more body. You see it kind of like sticking to that spoon a little bit more, creating a coat. That's what I'm looking for. Now we're gonna take that whisked egg. We're simply going to Drop this in while whisking around. Sort of break that up. There we go. Ooh, ooh, using the tiny whisk hurts. Love that. Right by cooking is pain. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, beautiful. So that egg's gonna get nice and cooked. 
And we're boiling it up. Now it's time to plate. My memory of Skittles is that I liked them a lot when I was a kid, when I used to eat a lot of sugar, and now I switched it for alcohol, so I like that more. My expectations are that this meal is going to be better than it should be, but not good enough to be worth spending money on. All right, Chef, what we have for you today is hot and sour orange Skittle soup. So this is based on a traditional uh, Sichuan hot and sour soup. The base is uh, mushroom bouillon, some king trumpet mushroom stock, and then uh, ching kiang vinegar. And then we've added lily buds, bamboo shoot, a fair amount of orange Skittles, and fresh soaked orange rind to really marry that flavor, getting the fresh and the candied in there, garnished with scallion, chili thread, and garlic chips. Looks great. Thanks. How does it smell? It smells like hot and sour soup, and I do love hot and sour soup. It smells sweet. Mm -hmm. it yeah. Sounds like a like a sweet and hot and sour soup. Well, but... we were trying to think of like what is a cuisine that uses a lot of acid and a lot of sweetness, and yeah. honestly, a lot of fruit as well in the cuisine. And we kind of ended up on like the Chinese American that I grew up with. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Well, it does smell great. I love these little togarashi threads too. They're oh, they're great, guys. So this is a vegan soup then. Uh, Skittles probably have gelatin in it, so I believe it's neither kosher for oh, Passover nor do. vegan. <laughs> We got Nicole laughing. <laughs> it is not bad. Okay. It does taste like somebody took a food I love and put something I don't like as much in it, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. We were trying to kind of get some of that like heavy orange essence from the peel and then like marry it with a lot of umami. Yeah, there's like a saccharin corn syrupy like finish on it. Oh yeah, it's probably all the Skittles we dumped in it. <laughs> I'm just Dummy, saying. Like, the food critic. Well, here's the question. Well, again, so this gets into the uh, is it is it uh, how much of the of my assessment is my being impressed by you using <laughs> Skittles, and how much should I pretend like if this was just a re if I went to a Chinese restaurant and got this, I'd be like, yeah, there's definitely like there's a little corn syrupy mm -hmm. something in there. Would you be mad about it though? If you were blind tasting that from a restaurant, would you be mad about it? I wouldn't order it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's but fair. I wouldn't be mad. I mean, the texture's great. All the flavor notes are in there. The part that gets me, and I'm probably gonna be saying this this whole episode, is just that extra processed saccharin, like Americana food scientist thing mixed in there. Certain parts of this came from like a laboratory in Germany. Oh, definitely. Listen, we've had worse starts to meals before. I'm still taking this as a win, a Pyrrhic victory mm -hmm. at worst. I think you're gonna love course number two. I also haven't eaten all day, so <laughs> I'm kinda in. Yeah, stop eating. You need, you need to be hungry for two, so it tastes better. I had to do Chopped once, and I remember researching and watching the show and being like, what do you do if you have a weird ingredient, right? Like whether it's like century egg or something crazy like that. The secret is to use it in like a sauce. Cause sauce, you can always kind of modify it and mess with it. You know, once you're doing like a, like a, a dehydrated Skittle crumble crusted panko, uh, you know, tonkatsu curry or something like, that I get a little worried about, but uh, you can usually sneak sauces. You can get the color, get some of the flavor, but balance it with acid and fat, whatever else you need. All right, so we start off with that Sichuan inspired Skittles hot and sour soup into the entire province of Sichuan. I'm so sorry, um, but it was pretty delicious. And so now we're going to Cantonese style barbecue. This is Tashu pork. Uh, it's this incredibly lacquered, fatty cut of pork that typically does have red food dye in it. Y'all have probably seen it. Uh, a lot of local Chinese American spots will have it on their steam table as well. So we figured we'd use Skittles for it. So we got a nice hunk of pork butt, which pork butt is actually the shoulder. And I think as a person whose shoulders are actually bigger than my butt, I kind of like identify with that, you know, getting them confused. I have Hank Hill ass syndrome. I actually found out I have a, a medical condition called spondylosis, which means that my back is really flat and so it makes my butt look smaller. <laughs> You know, we worked with what Jewish God gave us. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of Shaoxing to this marinade. We're gonna marinate this pork right here. We're gonna massage all this really intensely sweet marinade. Then we're gonna cook it for a long, long time. We don't have the capability to do like an actual hanging Cantonese style barbecue in this Ikea ass kitchen right now. So we're gonna do the best we got. We're gonna put it in an oven, roast it low and slow. We keep basting it with this liquid. You'll see, you'll see. We're adding, uh, this is oyster sauce. Oh, dude, get a bottle of oyster sauce and just anything you're cooking, any sort of stir fry. Splash it in there, it's just gonna taste delicious. We got a little bit of light soy in there. We have hoisin going in. Yeah, hoisin sauce is great. Got a little bit of honey for some extra sweetness just in case the Skittles weren't carrying enough. Uh, with Chinese five slice batter. I washed my hands after that, that was gross. Give me a sec. <laughs> Chinese five slice powder, this is fennel, cinnamon, Anise, clove, and peppercorn. I never remember the five spice. I finally did it. Chinese five spice, uh, really delightful, really aromatic. Love those deep winter spices, and then fermented bean curd. That's going in there. Perfect. 
So we're just gonna, I gotta put like two, god dang it. <laughs> like I'm tossing a Caesar salad table side. Why doesn't Olive Garden add a table side Caesar presentation? That would get people back in the doors. Actually, Olive Garden's thriving right now. If anyone was wondering, if any of you sitting back at home were like, how's Olive Garden doing these days and the Greater Darden Restaurant Group, shockingly well, they weathered the storm of the pandemic. Good news, or, you know, I don't know, however you feel about it. I like the chicken parm, it's nice. Okay, so we got our beautiful marinade. Do not let this touch your hands, because it will stain. What? Oh, dude, that's why this doesn't look super red. Red food dye, man. That's smart, because, you know, we're getting some from the Skittles, but I want even more in there, because chashu is incredibly red, and food dye is generally used in most marinades. But I believe typically, like, before food dye, it's like tandoori chicken, where it's like, it used to just be, like, Kashmiri chili powder and all of the delicious spicy ingredients, but then they were like, oh, if it's more red, people will buy more of it. And so gradually, cooks just started adding food dye once it became available commercially. Similar with, like, um, there's the, the Hunanese dish, uh, red braised pork belly, similar thing where it used to be like a, a red sugar and then now it's just food dye, baby. All right, drop the pork in there. We're gonna marinate the pork for 24 hours at least. Gonna really let all that salt, all that sugar, all the aromatics, all the food dye soak in there. I'm gonna massage this in. That is blood red. I love what's going on here. This is gonna taste good. There's no way this doesn't taste good. I've had Chinese brands of beef jerky that are just fruit punch flavored beef jerky. And so like for me, that's sort of a callback to this. There's an entire Chinese beef jerky store in uh, Asian Garden Mall down in Garden Grove. And boy, I, that was like a buffet for me. Yellow curry beef jerky, fruit flavor beef jerky, some beef jerkies you didn't know the name of, but that never stopped me from eating a jerky. That never stopped me from jerking. So, in the mall. So, <laughs> gonna let this, uh, let this marinate for 24 hours and then we're gonna start lacquering and basting. I don't reckon I've ever seen any food that looks like that. And that's pretty exciting because we're out here breaking new ground. Uh, no, I mean, it does look very Tashu-like, uh, which is rad. <laughs> Did we go a little heavy on the red food diet? Who knows? It, uh, it smells like a fruit cake that was thrown in an Arby's dumpster because you're getting all of that meat flavor going on there and you're getting like that sort of fruit punchy cherry flavor from the Skittles. I think it's gonna taste intensely delicious if you can get past all that artificial fruit flavor or lean in. But I'm gonna lacquer this one more time. I'm gonna take some of that juice Yes, oh baby boy, look at you. Uh, we're gonna like, oh, I cannot believe what the hell this looks like. This is incredible. We're gonna lack it this one more time, pop it back in the oven, and then we're gonna slice it, serve it pretty simply with yellow Skittle. <laughs> we're gonna serve it pretty simply with yellow Skittle rice and purple Skittle uh, blanched bok choy. We also made some orange Skittle chili crisp. This is gonna be dank. Best meal I ever had, that's a, Tough one. I mean, there's always like the childhood version. There's like the pastas I grew up making. My mom made me as a kid and those are amazing. Um, uh, I will, as a as a weird brag, I was recently in Copenhagen and did get to go to Noma uh, while my wife, uh, who's an amazing comedian, was on stage for one night in Copenhagen. I ate at Noma alone <laughs> and she uh, was not there and it was an amazing meal, but not because she wasn't there, just because it was a really good meal. All right, chef, for course number two, we're sticking with the Chinese American classics that I grew up on. Sorry, they put a tape here for me to put my pelvis again. So I'm putting my pelvis on the tape. So we have for you today, this is a red Skittle Sashu. We figured what's like a red That's... sweet dish, right? This makes sense. So we got that cherry flavoring coming through on the Skittles, but of course all of that Shaoxing wine and the fermented bean curd. We have a Skittle uh, chili crisp, uh, everything homemade, trying to keep some of that texture of the Skittle, you know, let you chew on it longer, experience the flavor more. Mm -hmm. Some yellow Skittle steamed rice just in the jus and essence of that Skittle. And then a little bit of blanched bok choy, as you can see. The char shu with the Skittle sauce is a really smart idea. Thank I'm saying you. now before having tasted it. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, did you sneak any MSG anywhere? We did, we did. There was oh, yeah. a, a bit of MSG in that marinade. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, so were there Skittles in the rice too? They are, so it was just uh, um, steamed in Skittle jus, uh, essenced with Skittle. Yeah, it's in there, but it's subtle. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the, the food critic -y single component bite. Oh, do it, do it. Try it all together. I want to taste everything separately in there. Do you ever say a chef recommends here? Oh, often. Chef recommends combining it all into one bite? Yeah, yeah. A chef recommends just putting it into a blender and drinking it with a boba straw. That's mostly a color attack, not a palate attack. We're trying to really just get the uh, <laughs> the essence. Like, can I waft the can chef recommends wafting the dish at the guest? Did that improve your experience? Fill out a comment card after. That chili crisp was actually kind of fun. It's got heat. That's the cool thing with this kind of a dish is with a lot of stuff too, you can have, you can balance extremes with opposite mm. extremes. Yes. So you can get like the sweet, sour, funky, umami, all kind of like ramp everything up. And we'll just grab it. It's like getting punched in the face in both directions at the same time. So it stabilizes. Smart. 
The jaw surgery is expensive, but it's smart. <laughs> Tasting the rainbow? Right. Yeah, you know? This is a food that wants that processed saccharin Americana mm -hmm. thing. I'm pleasantly surprised by this one. I was gonna say this was, whenever it's bad, I'm gonna plug my YouTube show and so you can watch it by clicking right here, but I'm not gonna do that because this is better than the first dish. That's good, that's good. We're improving by the third dish. You're gonna be blown away. That's gonna be the sweetest thing in the world, I'm thinking. Oh, you just brace yourself. One of the things that really kills me in a restaurant is when they ruin the pacing of an evening where you're having that first drink, you get the first bite in, you're feeling really good, you're waiting for the next meal to come, waiting for to come back for your drink, and all of a sudden you're just kind of sitting there for like that 30 minutes where the buzz wears off and you're like this, this sucks, I wanna go home now. All right, we filled them up with a bunch of pork and rice and all that starch, and now we're moving on to dessert. But do, do y'all wanna hear some history about dessert? Can I waste time on this real quick? Yeah! Get your dessert! Dessert is a uniquely Western European concept, literally coming from the French deservir, which literally means to deserve uh, a dinner table. And so while people were clearing the dinner table, they would serve a dessert or a dessert uh, to uh, cleanse the palate, a little sweet thing. But it is a very like French, dinner, fine dining style thing. And so in China, you know, the concept of like a dessert after every meal, like might not exactly exist, painting with a broad brush here, but there are a lot of really delightful Chinese sweets and tong shui is one of my favorite things. It's like a sweet soup and I'm a big fan of wet foods. So we're gonna make that right now and we're gonna make one with sago pearls. This is like a uh, starchy, it's tapioca-like, but tapioca is made from cassava and then sago is made from the starch of a uh, palm heart. It's a very specific type of palm. So we're gonna do that and we're also gonna thicken it up. We're trying to like marry the idea of like that sweet soup with a custard. So we're gonna be thickening it with some taro and some coconut milk as well. And then of course we got the green Skittles in there. It's just gonna add some of that like, is this lime? Green Skittles are lime, right? They've always been lime? They were lime, then they became green. Then they became lime again. Are you serious? Yeah, people hate it. People hate green apple. That's why we're doing lime juice in there as well. So we're gonna add our sago pearls. These are so fun, man. I love all like the Chinese canon of desserts. I mean like Vietnam, you have like, um, it's called jia, which is like a, like my favorite is a, a corn version of jia, which is like a, just basically like a corn custard topped with like condensed milk. Oh, it's so good. We're gonna add coconut milk in there. Sweetened condensed milk to get all of that nice sweetness. And typically, the tong shui are not as sweet. There's that one that you get a dim sum that's like the ginger and tofu. Mmm, give me all that. And now we're gonna melt our green Skittles in there. And then I'm gonna let the Skittles melt before I add the taro. I'm gonna add a little bit of lime juice. We got no dairy in there, so we don't gotta worry about curdling. I'm gonna reinforce some of that freshness, you know, cause we're getting a lot of that sugary sweet candy syrupiness in there from the Skittles. Also, Skit <sighs> Oreo did the pop-up restaurant. You know, they had like Ann Burrell or something cook for it in Times Square. Skittles, if you wanna do a pop-up restaurant, we're here. All right, bring this to a boil. Let Skittles dissolve, but you already see all that green. <laughs> you see all the green. We have green food dye just in case we wanted to reinforce that greenness. I don't even know if we're gonna need it because we got a lot of the green color leaching out of them Skittles right there. And then, I mean, we're trying to go pretty simply on this dessert. So we're just gonna add the taro in there. That's gonna thicken it up. It's gonna hydrate the sago pearls. It's gonna get nice and starchy and have a simple, elegant presentation. I think we're gonna blow them out the frickin' water. It's dessert, right? 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 Validate me! I very, very rarely order dessert at restaurants. Like I said, you know, to steal a line from Kevin Bloodsoe, you know, I take my sugar in alcohol form. But uh, I will occasionally, if there's a great dessert, I'm a believer in liking great versions of anything. So uh, a great dessert is great. Uh, shout out to the strawberry ice cream at Antico here in Los Angeles. But uh, yeah, I'm not looking for a chocolate lava cake at, you know, uh, but where do they make that now? Uh, Bennigan's? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Chef, for your final course, we wanted to give you something elegant, something light to end the meal. This is a play on a Chinese tong shui, mm -hmm. or the sweet soup. So we've done actually a custard with sago pearls, taro, lime skittles, and a little bit of lime zest. And on top, you have some desiccated coconut, a lime skittle grass jelly made in-house. Of course, who the fudge do you think we are? And then some candied lime zest on top. This kind of feels like I meant like a like a 2004 corporate activation <laughs> restaurant. Yes. Oh, chef actually recommends that you just stick your whole face in there and try and lap it up like a dog. Not a lot of smell, actually. The coconut just... comes through a little bit. You thought I was gonna snort it? No, I thought you were trying to get high. I was like, bro, you can't do that. I mean, you can't do that here. After five. Go to the alley. All right.
Let's say this is a You thing. said soup? Uh, <laughs> well, it was a kind of like a play on like the sago pearl soup, but we turned it into like more of an American pudding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It was another example of, boy, I wish the Skittles weren't in there. <laughs> God dang it. But not bad at all. Texture's nice. It's got a little bit of like a, a health food overnight oats with like collard greens in them look to it. <laughs> yeah, but fair it enough. does not taste like that at all. Do you think this looks like a dessert that a restaurant who fired their pastry chef would make and then just keep in a walk-in and then just throw on a diner's table? This is definitely built for uh, service. Yeah, you can, <laughs> the answer was. These are, yeah, yeah, like there's definitely like, if you come on the wrong day, you're getting a five day old pudding with like a sweaty top. Um, it makes me feel like you guys really uh, should believe in yourselves more and, and maybe just make regular dinner sometimes. And uh, I think you'd be really good at it. Master gave Dobby a suck. Dobby is free now. We don't have to cook with Skittles, everybody. We can just make good food. Overall, what do you think of the meal? <clears throat> All right, so it started out um, uh, a little terrifying because yeah. I was like, oh man, this would have been so good if it didn't have Skittles in it. And then uh, you guys got, I think, better and better at figuring out how to incorporate the ingredient in a really smart way. The problem with the hot and sour soup to me is it's not benefited by being aggressively sweet. It can have a little bit of sugar, but then when you get into the char shoe, now you're like, okay, the sugar is supposed to be there. We're getting a glaze action. That bright red color belongs there too. So it, that all kind of made sense. And this one actually is the least Skittlesy tasting considering it's the dessert. Seems like a, a real mess up by you guys, but. Uh, <laughs> we will mess up again. <laughs> but overall, I'm, uh, I'm very impressed by the work that you did knowing what I do know. <laughs> If I went to a restaurant, I would think that this place was going out of business very quickly. So you wouldn't write a good review about this if you're back in like the weekly days. My review would be probably just be called Why? <laughs> you're gonna um, want to elongate that title for SEO reasons. I would say, you know what would be great uh, is if this person uh, Made, made normal food. Yeah, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. <laughs> you, having collabed with a lot of chefs, would you ever write a cookbook with me? I would be very curious to see what happened if we got to work together on something like that. Could be fun. If you want to see a Mythical Kitchen cookbook, comment below. Noah, thanks so much for coming out, man. It's my pleasure. You're, it's finally, you'll be able to join the ranks of Jeremy Fox, Naisha Arrington, Kevin Bloodsoe, and Ari Colander. Give me the Michelin star, baby. I want to be on Fox like Naisha. We love you, Naisha. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Thank you all so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. Uh, if you're not subscribed, don't got notifications on, you should probably do it. I think it'd be a good idea. You think it'd be a good idea? You think it'd be a good idea? It's the one of the only channel I've ever subscribed to. That's actually pretty rad. That's that, that's a that's a dab up there. Also, subscribe to Noah. Check out his stuff. He's incredible. Buy his book when it comes out. January 31st. Hell yeah. See y'all next time. You're too hot to handle, and so is your bakeware. Get a Mythical Kitchen oven mitt available now at mythical.com.